Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be participating, <laughs> barely participating, in the Art Challenge Mermay. For the entire month of May, artists have been drawing mermaids inspired by either a prompt list with a word or phrase for each day, or drawing whatever they desire. And then there's me who does one drawing for the entire month and says that she has participated. <laughs> but if I'm being honest, I forgot it was Mermaid until two weeks in and I'm not the type to rush and play catch up. So I spent a week and a half finalizing this one mermaid who I adore. I started out by sketching a couple concepts in my sketchbook of positions and tail shapes. When I was happy with an idea, I moved over to my iPad where I used Procreate to come up with the final positioning, colors, and layout of the piece. And now I'm going to transfer her to some marker paper and use my Copics to create the final drawing. This is normally my art drawing process. I like to work with references before I do any traditional piece. Most of the time I'm doing straight up portraits of people's faces or furry little friends and don't need to create my own reference, but this was not the case. It's easier to rework the composition and color scheme digitally if I don't like a way the arm is compared to the body, I just need to select it and make it bigger or smaller, sometimes even just change the shape where traditionally I'd need to erase and redraw until I got it right. Don't like an element? Erase that layer. Not sure about something before adding it? Put it on a different layer so you're not ruining what you've already done. But in case you did, there's always a back button. Most of the week and a half was spent reworking the reference in Procreate, saving me time in the final drawing. So let me tell you more about my mermaid and what inspired me to draw her to begin with. First is her tail design. It's based off the Atlantic bluefin tuna, an endangered species for being highly prized for sushi and sashimi, leading to the overfishing of their kind. Before I was vegetarian, the spicy tuna roll was actually my favorite. But for the last three weeks, I binge watched a show called Wicked Tuna and their spinoff Wicked Tuna Outer Banks, both available on Disney Plus. And yes, I am that weirdo that uses her account to watch fishing shows rather than movies about princesses. <laughs> The show follows fishermen from Gloucester, Massachusetts and North Carolina during their very regulated bluefin tuna fishing seasons. The fishermen have many ways to catch the fish, like rod and reel, harpoon, or green stick. If you want to know more, you can watch the show or look it up. But the tuna has to be a certain size, bigger than 73 inches, for them to legally catch the fish. Once they have a fish that's big enough, they bring it back to the dock where the buyer looks for lots of fat and oil in the tail meat and a translucent core from the center of the fish. The ones that tick every box perfectly are the ones most profitable and shipped off to Japan. One of the reasons why I made my mermaid plus size is because the fattier the tuna, the better. Second reason she is a thick woman is an artist on TikTok, Queer Peaches, says she has to research for her character designs and when researching for mermaids, found out that in order for our skin type to survive in the deep cold ocean, they would need to be fat. The thick layer of blubber in marine life, like whales, keeps them warm and for mermaids protects all their bodybuilder muscles underneath. So I'm not saying I'm supposed to be a mermaid, but I did base her body off mine. <laughs> like I have stretch marks in the exact same places. 
but you never know. <laughs> so she's plus size for survival and how the bluefin tuna would be most sought out for. The background of the drawing is inspired by the Japanese need for the fish. I thought since that's where they are the most sought out, they would make renditions of this fish in their art style. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it's like how people get portraits of their loved ones and of their animals. Like that's the only way I could think of it's just to show their love and appreciation for the fish. So I chose what I've seen in traditional Japanese tattooing on the show Ink Masters just to put in those elements of Japanese art in there. Little history on Ink Masters, it's a tattooing competition show that has one episode dedicated to traditional Japanese tattooing and it's also my favorite because Chris Nunez is the most critical judge on that show and that is his specialty and I know that episode either you're going to fail hard or Chris will praise these artists but I've watched every season of Ink Master so I hope I did Chris proud with my waves if not I am sorry I decided to add some waves inspired by the great wave because this is a marine life art piece I tried to match the shapes of the white water from the top of the wave and shade it with a light blue like it's done in the painting and how it's done in tattoos. The big circle is supposed to be a red moon. Why? Because one episode they tattooed cranes with red moons and I'm obsessed with the moon. <laughs> I tried to find out the meaning of the red moon in Japanese tattooing and art, but I couldn't find anything. Got a lot of information about their red sun, but I did not do the rays that would indicate it to be a sun. So that's probably where I messed up. <laughs> I tried my best to bring in a lot of different elements into this piece. My love for these shows, these fish, and my body. I think she came out beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. But you guys let me know what you think. I'll have her posted on Instagram and TikTok with the sound uh, Queer Peaches used describing her research. I've seen a lot of beautiful renditions of mermaids this past month on those platforms. All beautiful, all amazing pieces by equally beautiful and amazing artists. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.